So my mom is going to be 80 years old later this month. Unfortunately, she's down and out today with the flu. On the positive side, she's heavily medicated. <laughs> and when my mother is both horizontal and medicated, she, she writes me letters. This one's worth sharing. Hi, Mike. I'm still recuperating from the flu, and in my downtime, I came across a lovely picture on the internet of an elderly couple sitting on a green hillside looking off into the sunset. It was an ad for a funeral home, and I thought, hey, that could be us. <laughs> that got me to reminiscing over our exciting, albeit abbreviated, career in the wide world of advertising. From Viva paper towels to lead jeans to promotional work on dirty jobs and somebody's got to do it, and most recently on returning the favor, what fun we've had working with our kid, even when we're only paid <laughs> in steamed crabs. So I'm thinking, maybe you could make some calls and get us a commercial for a funeral home. I can assure you, your father and I are qualified. We've spent more time in funeral homes than in doctor's offices, and that's saying something. For us, walking into a funeral home is like walking into Cheers. <laughs> Everybody knows our name. They're always sad, of course, funerals, but at our age, they're often a celebration of life. Last month, we had two in one week. As we were leaving the viewing, your father shook his head and sighed. I swear, honey, sometimes I feel like we're in one of those documentaries Mike narrates for the National Geographic. We're in a herd of migrating wildebeest trying to cross a river on the Serengeti and the crocodiles are ravenous. <laughs> then he turned to me and said, guess it wasn't our turn today, hon. How about a crab cake? <laughs> Naturally, we've become very familiar with funeral home protocol over the years. Casket, flowers, family, friends, digital slideshows. I usually wear dark slacks and shoes and a jacket with a little color. No shocking pink or Chinese red, of course. There's a section of our closet designated exclusively for funeral clothes. Not that your father always observes it. The day he removed his coat and revealed a porky pig tie, I nearly passed out. Hey, you said it was a celebration of life. Nothing says celebrate like a dancing pig. Am I right? We usually sign the book as soon as we arrive, then make our way to the casket. One speaks softly, a sign of respect. I always try to be positive in my comments. Oh, look, doesn't she look nice, I'll say. Or, she looks so natural, as though she's just napping. Your father thinks I overdo it. Geez, Peg, by the time you leave, the family expects her to sit up and start singing Everything's Coming Up Roses. <laughs> Your father can be very sarcastic. So, I reminded him of the time he tried to find something nice to say about old Tom when he passed. To his credit, your father didn't mention that Tom had died in the company of another man's wife. Instead, Dad looked at the family and said, with a straight face, Boy, that Tom, he sure had a lot of energy, didn't he? <laughs> when he added, Yes, sir, he lived life to the fullest, right up to the climax. I had to cover my face with my handkerchief. Anyway, Mike, that's how it used to be in funeral homes, somber and respectful, except for the occasional dancing pig. But now, thanks to you, visiting a funeral home has become, in the words of your father, an absolute crapshoot. He's right. We no longer know what to expect. The first time we experienced the Mike Rowe effect was at Peaceful Destinations when a childhood friend passed away. I hadn't seen the family in years Dad agreed to accompany me and was signing the book when we heard the scream. Things were subdued when we entered, so I assumed the scream was someone's expression of grief and angst. Look, it's Miss Peggy, a woman yelled, rushing towards me with open arms. It was my old friend's daughter. Oh my God, she said, we just love, love, love your son. She was followed by a brother and then the widow. People stopped their conversations and watched as for the next half hour, the grieving family relived their favorite episodes of Dirty Jobs, recounting them to us as though we had never seen the show. <laughs> Not that it isn't fun to hear about your son's dirty adventures, but really, in a funeral home? <laughs> when a grandson said, Did you see the one where Mike was crawling through the sewers and a roach ran down his pants? An elderly aunt laughed so hard she spit her dentures out, had an asthma attack and had to be carried off to a chair and given her inhaler. 
Uh, Dad and I never made it over to the casket. Seemed like a downer. <laughs> when we finally left, we were followed to the door by family and friends, still laughing and talking about our filthy son. Well, I said, that was weird. <laughs> yeah, said your father, but at least we left him in good spirits. Want to get a crab cake? Of course, that was mild compared to the scene at Tranquil Alternatives. Ordinarily, we go to the three to five visitation, but had decided on the seven to nine in hopes of seeing some old college friends. We hadn't seen the deceased since school days. He'd been a pompous kind of guy, always had to be the center of attention. And from what we'd heard, he hadn't changed much over the years. Even now, his golden urn stood on an altar with a spotlight on it, surrounded by what looked like a victory wreath of greenery. <laughs> Things were very restrained, with soft music playing in the background. We spoke to the family and reconnected with some old friends. But, thanks to a dirty jobs marathon the day before, Tranquil Alternatives was about to become a lot less tranquil. <laughs> From the corner of my eye, I saw the wheelchair moving quickly in our direction. Hey, I know you. You're Mike Rowe's parents, aren't you? Guilty, said your father. The elderly gentleman applied his brake and lurched to his feet, saying in a gruff and booming voice, Well, I just saw your son on the TV. He was standing in shit up to here. He drew an imaginary line across his chest, then broke out in hysterical laughter. He was joined by others, and just like that, the seal was broken. Everyone gathered around us to discuss the hilarious details of your most disgusting jobs. Meanwhile, the golden urn, no longer the center of attention, was now an insignificant prop in the laughter-filled room, as I imagined a swirling dust storm of ashes within. When we left, your father observed, Oh well, guess it wasn't our turn today, hon. How about a crab cake? <laughs> anyway, no pressure, Mike. But if you ever get an actual agent, please tell them we're still available. <laughs> Very experienced. <laughs> and willing to work for food. <laughs> Love you, Mom. <laughs> Love you, too. Get better. Happy birthday in advance. <laughs>